All right guys, Murph's here. And today I wanna to talk about how to properly pair your slugs to your shotgun. Now, a lot of people don't really ask this question until they purchase a shotgun and then they decide they wanna run slugs through it and all of a sudden they're not so certain that they can just do that. Or they bought a shotgun, perhaps they now live in a state that requires them to use slugs for deer hunting and they're not entirely sure how to go about it. So that is what this video is addressed towards so that we can educate everybody, well, I can educate everybody on what it is that they can and can't do. So I actually grew up slug hunting as a kid. Ohio had very strict rules about, you had like two weeks out of the deer season that you could use uh, center fire cartridges for, and that was for slug hunting. Now they've expanded their laws to where you can use any straight wall cartridge, which of course they did that after I grew up and left, but what can you do? All right, so with that, let's go ahead and talk about some of the important aspects of using slugs out of shotguns. So to begin with, we have two different types of slugs. We have rifled slugs and we have sabo slugs. Rifled slugs are used with smoothbore barrels. Sabo slugs are used with rifled barrels. Now you can interchange those two. You can do the opposite. However, accuracy is gonna suffer. And in the case of rifled barrels, you're gonna run into an issue with leading. And that is gonna be that the bullet, the rifled slug in the rifled barrel is gonna leave behind a lot of its exterior, which over time may cause an issue. Now, if you're the kind of guy who just either zeroes or verifies zeroes at the start of deer season, and then fires just however many rounds it takes to harvest the number of deer that he harvests, then letting is not really gonna be an issue, though I would recommend that you clean that at the end of the season and you clean it thoroughly. I definitely wouldn't go multiple years without actually doing something about it because eventually that will constitute a bore obstruction if that letting builds up and your gun's gonna detonate. That would be pretty terrible to have happen to you. You don't have that same kind of issue with Sabo slugs, just to throw that out there. But regardless, you are going to have diminished accuracy. Now, let's go ahead and let's talk about smoothbore barreled shotguns at length. So smoothbore barrel shotguns kind of have the most that has to be understood. A lot of guys might have run out to Walmart or, or wherever and purchased a 26 or 28 inch barreled shotgun, something that would normally be considered to be for bird or perhaps target practice, you know, clay birds and stuff like that, and now are wanting to fit it into a home defense role or something like that and aren't entirely sure what they can fire through it. Now, slugs don't care about barrel length. They're gonna travel downrange either way. However, we do need to discuss choke. This is what we really have to get into now. Choke is the constriction of the barrel, and choke is used in order to be able to tighten a shot pattern so that the overall shot dispersion takes longer to occur and you can get more range out of your shot. And it, range, it ranges from cylinder bore, which is just a straight tube, there is no constriction in it, all the way up to you can get extra full chokes, which are generally considered to be like turkey chokes. And it's all a question of just how tight does the barrel taper down to nearer to the muzzle. Now, the vast majority of people will tell you that you should fire slugs through either cylinder or improved cylinder chokes. So either no constriction or very slight constriction. Now, I would add into that that you should go ahead and check your owner's manual. Your owner's manual might indicate that, I don't know, uh, modified chokes. I've seen modified chokes thrown out there quite a bit as being acceptable for slug use. So that way, if you've got a modified choke, you're good to go. You can go ahead and use slugs as long as your own owner's manual says so. Now, why, you might be asking yourself, why is it that everyone recommends like no more than improved cylinder, yet the manufacturer is saying you can use modify? Keep in mind that there's not a rigid standard on the constriction that makes a choke. There's kind of a broad spectrum. Like within these areas, this would roughly be considered modified. Within these areas, this is roughly considered improved cylinder, something like that. They're not strict standards. It's not that unusual to have, you know, two shock, two different shotguns with modified chokes and there be a little bit of a difference in the shot pattern between them. My JC Higgins Model 20, I've made surprisingly long shots on a modified choke. And a lot of people do consider those to be at the higher end of modified, almost like a, like a full modified or an extra modified type of deal. So that's, that's kind of how that works out, just to keep that in mind. So, 
full chokes. Now, most of the literature out there will tell you do not fire slugs through full chokes. And I will tell you that full chokes will affect your accuracy pretty drastically. Now, there are a lot of people in the forums and stuff like that who tell you that they fire slugs through their full choke shotguns all the time. They've never had a problem. They've never known anyone who's had a problem. When's the last time you heard about a shotgun detonating from a slug being fired in a full choke, blah, 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 blah. Couple things to take into account with that. Number one is that it's the guidance to not shoot them through full chokes is kind of like the guidance to not fire 5.56 five, and 223 chambers. The math is solid for that to not be a good outcome. Now, the minutia that dictates that one way or the other, how the manufacturer cut it or just how full of a choke it is and all that kind of stuff, that can't be accounted for. That's not accounted for in the math. The basic principle of pressures and constriction and all that kind of stuff is what dictates that this is not a good idea. Do not shoot slugs in full chokes. The reality of the matter is there are quite a few people out there who are successfully firing slugs through their full choke shotguns. Now, I did run across an interesting little story from a gunsmith who decided to test the theory. And what he did was he took his duck gun, which was a full choke, and he fired eight slugs through it. Now this is hardly scientific and eight is a really odd number to choose, but I guess that's what he had lying around at the time. He fired eight slugs through his full choke and he measured after each shot and discovered that his bore, specifically the end of his bore where the constriction for his full choke would be, was eroding by between 0.37 and 0.46 of a percent. So less than half of a percent with each shot was eroding away. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, and honestly, it really isn't, until you compare it to him, him doing the same test with steel shot, since that was his duck gun, and he has one third of a percent per couple of hundred rounds erode away with steel shot. Okay, well now 0.37 to 0.46 is actually a little more interesting, especially when you compare it to hundreds of rounds as opposed to a single. Now, there's a couple other things to take into account with this math is that this is this math is going to change as the erosion occurs. So as that full choke slowly becomes modified, that erosion is going to exponentially decrease. It's still going to happen, but it's going to be less. It's not like you're going to fire 800 rounds through it and then you're going to have an improved cylinder. That's not necessarily going to happen. It's going to take much more than that. We're, that math is not so linear. It's very much so more complex than that. However, it is still occurring, and that is a very interesting fact and definitely preferable to the gun exploding. But it does give some credence to why people believe the guns would explode if you fire the slugs through a full choke. Now... If you've got interchangeable choke tubes, you really don't have a lot of excuse for why you can't get a hold of the proper chokes. They're not terribly expensive. They're fairly easy to find. Even if you have to order them off the internet, it's still possible. Unless you're in some sort of dire need, I, I don't know, you're choosing to use slugs to defend yourself and you have to do it right now, there's not a whole lot of reason to have to fire slugs through less than perfect conditions. Just to throw that out there, we're, we're, I, I've seen choke tubes go for under $30. So it's absolutely an achievable thing, especially if you're planning far enough ahead. Now, they do make rifled choke tubes, which I have never used. Now, if you use a rifled choke tube, you are going to want to switch over to a Sabo slug. However, once again, I cannot vouch for their capability. That seems like very little stabilization for your slug. But uh, if you're watching this video and you use a rifle choke tube, let me know in the comments how it's working for you. I am very curious about it, which I could probably solve with doing just a little bit of research on my own. But A, I'm not quite that interested in it because I don't plan on slug hunting anytime soon nor using rifled choke tubes. And I would actually really like to hear somebody else's personal experience as opposed to finding something that someone's writing that might be endorsing a product. I'd, I'd rather hear from somebody who has no stake in the game. Now, somebody might be sitting here going, well, if cylinder bore is just the smooth tube, then why don't I just remove my choke tube and run it that way? Wouldn't that be like the same thing? And while you're not wrong, 
you're not right about that being a good idea because you're gonna have one of two things happen because like it's, it's totally gonna work it's gonna send the slug down range and it's it's going to more or less be like having a cylinder bore but you have threads in the barrel you're gonna want to take that into account so one of two things is gonna happen either a you're gonna have a buildup of lead in those threads and you're gonna have to find some way to get that out of there which is gonna be extremely difficult or B you're gonna damage your threads which is going to be a real pain to come back from. So, wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Now, polychokes. Here's the deal with polychokes. Polychokes kind of fall into the same realm as full chokes, where people are like, oh, I shoot slugs through my polychoke all the time. And if you don't know, a polychoke is a very early version of interchangeable choke tube that was an addition added to the muzzle of the barrel. So it's legitimately a selectable thing. They come with either interchangeable tubes or you twist the polychoke to the different select, uh, selections and that changes the constriction in the separate piece attached to the muzzle. I have never shot anything but lead bird shot through a polychoke and I have no interest in changing that anytime soon. There's just something about that process that I don't understand well enough to attempt to fire slugs or buckshot through them. And I like the guns too much, the, the guns that I have with polychokes, I like them too much in order to risk them in that way. So I would not recommend it. I would not suggest doing so. It's your, it's your gun, you do what you want, but I would not recommend it. Now, let's go ahead and talk about rifle barrels a little bit. There's not a whole lot to talk about with rifle barrels. So, generally, rifle barrels will either come with rifle sights already on them. Kind of like this one. This is actually a Maverick 88 barrel that I have attached to my old Mossberg Model 500. Or they will come with a... Uh, an optics mount so that you can put red dots or scopes or whatever it is that you want to put on them. Now, one thing I will say for rifle barrels is that you will actually get a little bit more consistent accuracy and greater range out of them. Now, that's not to say that smoothbore barrels are inaccurate, especially if you're running cylinder or improved cylinder bores, as much as it's to say that you have a consistent spin on the projectile so you have a higher probability for accuracy. I hunted entirely with improved cylinder bores. I actually hunted with a 590 a1, which probably sounds really weird, and luckily I never ran into a warden because, like, we had a plug into it, and it was like the plug was like this long because you know you've got a seven shot magazine tube at that point. But I'm pretty sure a warden would have been very incredulous that we were being above board with how we had that shotgun set up. Anyway, I've taken all of my deer with improved cylinder bores. Also, in addition to that, though we had our guns sighted in at 100 yards, I've taken all of my deer at under 50, just to keep that in mind. So I don't necessarily think you get that much advantage in range out of the rifled bore. Now, in general, talking about either self-defense or deer hunting, because, I mean, we are pretty much in deer season right now, or deer hunting type setups, if this is your first time, take a couple things into mind. I would 100% not recommend bead sights for hunting. For self-defense, it's fine. I 100% believe that you can accurately engage a human-sized target at 100 well enough to be able to get them out of the fight with a bead sight. I have engaged targets out to 50 with bead sights and had consistent accuracy. It was definitely minute of man, and I mean minute of man. Yeah, I, I wasn't shooting bullseyes consistently or anything like that, but it was acceptable accuracy, and I would be willing to push that out to 100, but I wouldn't consider it the best, and I most definitely would not take a shot on an animal at 100 with a slug. I, I, I would not consider that ethical with bead sights. However, you bring iron sights into the mix, now it makes a little bit more sense. Be it engaging man or engaging animal, this is going to help out. What's going to help out even more than that this being my Maverick 88 defensive shotgun would be a red dot. This is a Vortex Crossfire red dot. Red dots are fantastic for fast sight acquisition. So as a defense against the two-legged variety of varmint, this would be a fantastic option. 
You could also use this for deer. Um, the great thing about it is that you would have more field of view and all that kind of stuff. However, you're not gonna have any zoom function, which may or may not be an issue to you. However, you can mount scopes on hunting shotguns, and that makes sense. I wouldn't recommend scopes for self-defense type scenarios, but I would definitely recommend them for hunting. The vast majority of shotgun scopes, and I would recommend getting a shotgun scope because you're gonna want that eye relief. The vast majority of shotgun scopes on the market are very low power. You're talking like four power, maybe six. Depends on what it is that you're getting. However, that gives you a fantastic field of view. You're already talking about fairly close shots. It's not like you're sniping at 800 with these things. And it allows you to properly identify the target before you send that shot. Now, binos do the same kind of thing, but I always liked being able to give a deer one last once over to make sure I knew what I was shooting at and I was above board and legal before I squeezed the trigger. So, just something to think about there. All right, guys. Well, I think that more or less covers my thoughts on slugs and all that kind of stuff. We've talked a lot about different ammunition varieties and self-defense type measures to take with shotguns. I have a three-part video just covering that. But we didn't really get into the weeds on the specific things about slugs. And there are some things that you have to take into consideration when you're running slugs and shotguns. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you guys haven't checked them out yet, I do have a three-part series on defensive shotguns go ahead and give it a look. I do also have a lot of sporting shotguns reviewed. So if that's something you're looking for, go ahead and give them a gander and have a good day.